Good evening and welcome to After Hours. Joining us this evening is Andrew Fernio. Fernio. And he is an artist and a gallery shop owner on Main Island. Hi, Patrice. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So I was going to start with another question, but I've decided when I went into your shop, the first painting that stood out to me strongly was the rooster. So I want to talk about the rooster. Now, when I looked at the painting, first of all, it's just unusual. But for me, I've gone through a whole process with animals and eating meat and learning about factory farming. And to me, that represented exactly that. So can you tell me about that painting? Well, the rooster was uh, one I was trying to do, uh, add a little bit of humor into my work. Um, okay. it's, uh, it's called Flight Lessons. And uh, as you know, chickens have a limited ability to flight. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so with this one, I, I just wanted to give him a jetpack, and so he has this kind of uh, ambitious um, ability to fly. And the chick in the in the back in the forefront there is is looking on in trepidation with his abilities. So it really didn't have to do anything as an ethical statement, but uh, I could see why it would be interpreted that way. How does that make you feel like, and you must get this all the time, because your artwork is very interesting. It's complex. It's not just one thing or another, I, I would say. So you must get like people who would see things that you don't intend, and does that bother you, or is that what you want? No, actually, it doesn't bother me at all. That's it's kind of what I, I look forward to, is that I don't think art should necessarily be um, one interpretation. It's, it's, it's exciting that the viewers can interpret it in many different ways and they can tell their own narratives and stories out of it. And that's sort of what I'm going for. Where did you get the chicken feather or the rooster feather? <laughs> well, I work um, on a farm on Main Island as well uh, and they have a number of chickens roaming around so it was an easy, easy find. Easy pick. <laughs> I like incorporating natural elements or, or just miscellaneous ephemera into my work as well. You deal a fair bit with um, animals and nature, and has that always been an attraction through your artistic life? Um, it's always been something I've been interested in. Um, I spent a long time uh, when I was younger uh, looking through those Audubon and Peterson books and, and that kind of thing, the field guides. And My parents were big fans of uh, Robert Bateman, that sort of thing. Um, so. Uh, I've always been very interested in wildlife and nature, and moving to the Southern Gulf Islands, that, that really was, it was just everywhere, and so That's it perfect. really inspired my work. Yeah. So what is your background? Were your parents artists? Would you say that, I mean, this has always been kind of a, a thing for me, because I've been attracted to art, I've taken art classes, but I don't, like, I never had the, the talent, or I never, you know, I couldn't quite see myself as doing that. Did, were you a born artist? Is it something you learn? Like, are we all artists? Can we all, you know? Um, I think the potential's there. Everybody has their own uh, spin on creativity. Um, I personally did not come from an artistic background. My parents were both math teachers uh, mm -hmm. in Ontario. Um, and uh, But as far back as I can remember, I'd always been um, doodling and picking up a brush. And, and so that... That really took off with me, uh, and um, I've been doing it ever since. And so when did it really firm up? You went to art school. Talk a bit about that. Well, before art school, uh, in high school, I was one of those kids you'd see in the hallways, just doodling little pictures and, and creating drawings. And um, But uh, I decided to go to art school uh, probably about 10 years ago now. Um, so I went to the Ontario College of Art and Design in Toronto. I majored in drawing and painting, uh, and that's when I first really started painting. Um, and I took minors in art history and the material arts. Okay. And so what's your medium? Is it acrylic? Yes? Yes. I, I prefer acrylics. They're easy to manipulate. They're easy to paint over and uh, drying time and all that. It's just, it's, it's just a very comfortable method for me. Um, I do use aerosols and, and markers and other things kind of to accentuate things, but mostly acrylics. Yeah. Okay, so again, um, 
the rooster, of course, represented something different for me. And interesting you talk about flight, because I think before they were domesticated, they actually could fly. Probably a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So for me, it was kind of instantly a political sort of art piece. And then I saw your monkey the other day. And can you tell us about the monkey? Because again, to me, that's like experimentation or sending off to space. So talk about the Well, monkey. yeah. Uh, in the early days of the space programs, they, they, they would send monkeys into space. Um, it wasn't so much a political statement again, but it's just sort of, I, I just like the idea. Um, I wanted to draw on this, uh, this monkey who might not make it back from his journey, but he doesn't know that, but he still has a, a sort of brave intrepidness to him. And it's just supposed to be bold and, and a little bit otherworldly. And so. so earlier we were talking about sort of the art world being here in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you came from Toronto. Um, and who decides, like, is there a frustration in an artist on how the sort of art world works? Like, who decides who's a good artist? Like, how is there a frustration? Talk a bit about that. Sort sure. Of the... um, I, I think there is for a lot of artists that, uh, I think there's space for everybody. There's definitely a niche market for everybody's work. Uh, they just, you have to find that, uh, what that circuit is. And galleries aren't necessarily the best circuit for everybody. Um, some people do very well online. Some people do very well as graphic designers and and so you can promote your work in several different ways you just have to find what's right for you uh, as far as what's good <laughs> that's often in the eye of the spectator um, mm. and so I, th I find though if if an artist is passionate about their work that'll generally shine through and and form composition whatever else people will pick up on that if the passion's there so did you have any um art influences or people who supported you along the way that made a big difference in you pursuing and ke keeping on going? Oh, absolutely. Um, especially as of late, uh, you know, being, being out here on, on the Gulf Islands and being surrounded by such a thriving artistic community, there's, it's been really nice to, to find some sort of mentors to look up to and, and to do the same to other up-and-coming artists, um, myself, so... Uh, yeah, I had uh, several teachers, though, in, in college that, that really pushed my boundaries, and sometimes I wouldn't always agree with their opinions, but, but it made me think of it differently and, and try to keep that in mind for the next piece. So. so how does the inspiration come to you? Like, what, how does your sort of work work? How does your brain work? I'm trying to find out how your brain works in terms of doing a painting. You know, like the elephant. Oh, can, yeah, you can hold this sure. up, and the octopi. And I think of Jeffrey Mason, the psychiatrist, and he wrote, he's written books about animals, and I think one of them was the, not the intelligence of elephants. But octopi are supposed to be intelligent, too. So talk about the painting. Sure, absolutely. Uh, well, it's funny you mention that, because um, I do tend to, uh, to think that we do an anthropomorphize animals based on our own intelligence, and we as humans have... Uh, our, our limits and our, our understanding of what intelligence pertains to. Um, and so with animals, you know, we often try to interpret that on them. And, and you're right, elephants and octopus are very uh, intelligent by our standards. Um, and so, uh, but it, it might not be that for them. They have a very different method that, that we can't fully comprehend because we're limited by our own. Um, as far as this piece goes, I, I really like taking something that's identifiable and mixing it with something else and just reinterpreting that. And so I do a lot of sort of hybrid work, and putting mm -hmm. in different images that, uh, that you couldn't always necessarily see on, just in the real world. Mm -hmm. You also use hands. I, which painting do you want I to do. go first? Uh, well, let's go with the slug. Okay. I like slugs. Most people don't like slugs, but I <laughs> used to go to Lynn Canyon, and you'd see the slugs. And in fact, if you sat in the woods for a while, they move quite fast. We think they move slow, but they actually move quite... They're quite beautiful. Anyway, talk about that painting in the hand. Uh, well, this is a uh, this is a banana slug, and um, on the island I live on, Maine... Uh, they tend to get fairly big. They're, I believe, the second biggest species of slug in the world. 
Um, and so this is, um, this is part of a series I started a couple of years back, and I've done a couple of animals with this theme now, just uh, replacing their head with, with a hand sign. And I try to keep the hand um, similar to the shape of their head. Now this all started uh, pretty innocently. I was doing shadow puppets on the mm. wall. Okay. And uh, it just started me thinking that, you know, that would be a good series to do. And so it started with a whale, and then I've done this with the slug now. Uh, and as far as the process goes for doing a piece like this, what I do is I try to find either a, a photo I've taken myself or uh, um, some online sources and amalgamate them and, uh, and then take a photo of my hand in that position and, mm -hmm. and just pop it into Photoshop and, and I paint it from there. So. Interesting. I um, knew uh, a painter, Nora Pet Petriche, mm -hmm. and she was from Argentina. And a lot of people in there was, I don't know what year it was, uh, but a takeover and people were disappearing. And the one thing she remembered about the close people in her life, her husband, friends, was, was their hands. And so in her paintings, she very much, the body might be normal, but the hands were like stood out. And so right. when I saw your hands, I wondered where that came from. And then this painting of the hand, tell, talk about that. That's very kind of eerie, but very powerful and haunting in a way, and yet beautiful too, with the tree so precise. Anyway, talk a little bit. Thanks. Um, this is a more recent piece. Uh, I've, in the last couple of pieces I've done, I've sort of stepped away from the wildlife and just, it still has a nature theme, but, uh, but this is more of a personal piece to me. Um, we all go through dark times in our lives, and so this one was kind of being, being ferried of, across the dark waters by, by another person. And uh, the candle symbolizes hope, obviously, and it's, the hope is still there, but there's still an eeriness that surrounds it. But as long as you keep moving forward through those dark waters, then you hopefully it becomes lighter. Something good will happen. Yeah. And then it reminds me, um, you picked me up on Main Island and you had a painting in the car, and we were just talking about it earlier. And I saw it as a, a tree form forming into a woman's body. So talk about that painting. Uh, that piece uh, is called Celestial. Um, it's a rather large piece, so I couldn't bring it in today. But, but we uh, will see it. <laughs> it uh, that's actually, uh, I took the inspiration from that from uh, one of the photos that the Hubble telescope had captured of the, I believe they're called the Pillars of Creation in the Eagle Nebula. And um, to me, it just, it stood out as this this woman with her arch, with her back arched and um, and it was a very easy piece to interpret that way. And so I just, I had a, a model pose for me and then overlapped that in Photoshop and, and went from there. And so, yeah, I, I really like that one. I think it's one of the more successful ones. What to you is successful for you when you're doing this and makes you, because I know sometimes with all kinds of endeavors, you sort of want everything to be perfect, and you redo it, and you redo it, and redo it. So to you, what satisfies you? What satisfies you in some of your work? <laughs> well, that, uh, <laughs> that varies, I guess, from piece to piece. But, okay. And I mean, I, I, as far as uh, other people looking at it, they could see something as incredibly successful that I don't think is some of my best work. And so it's, it's funny that way. Then going back again to it being in the eye of the spectator, <clears throat> but uh, as f the, um, I, I view my more successful pieces as ones that I feel a personal connection with, that, uh, that I put a lot of time into, uh, that have good uh, balance of form and composition, um, an interesting subject matter. Mm -hmm. and, well, your paintings are definitely interesting. Oh, thank you. And you mentioned you took art history and you talk about composition, and I took an art history class and the teacher was great she was a flamboyant you know interesting you know but I found the analysis of triangles on this ancient art from Rome impossible to um, believe that they would sit there doing you know do triangles and make sure so when you say composition is it that detailed in your work uh, for me, it doesn't necessarily have to be detailed as long as it's well-balanced. I, I leave a lot of areas just untouched or, or 
sort of murky and then focus on uh, detail in other areas. Um, I'll um, point out the owl here. Yeah, um, yeah. I focus on uh, uh, a certain part of the body and then just let the rest fall apart, and that's okay sometimes. It just It's kind of where it takes you. So. Talk a bit. You did an owl series. Talk a bit about that. Uh, yeah. Um, why I've, you did it, how uh, the thought came there, what you did. Well, uh, I'm not even sure why I started doing those. I've done about 12 of them now. Um, that series is called The Owls Are Not What They Seem, which is a reference to a, a 90s show called Twin Peaks. Oh, but yes. um, my, I remember my mother had a large collection of little owl figurines, as well as several Robert Bateman paintings, and I would just sit and stare at them for hours when I was a kid. And so I think that, that kind of shone through. And um, it's, I can hear the owls every night on Main Island, so can't always find them, but... Well, you'll know because they'll be staring at you and they'll <laughs> turn and look. I've had that happen <laughs> because they're staring at you. And I had the privilege, actually, of um, there's a rescue place outside of Vancouver. And um, I had the privilege of talking to the woman running it, but she also had owl, an owl with her. And the owl was actually on my hand, and it was an amazing thing. So you've also done uh, like an owl beluga. Talk a bit about that, the owl beluga. Did that come off of the series? Was that a separate thought? It was a separate thought. Um, with, with the owl series, I was trying to uh, pick just certain identifiable owls that you can find, because they're very various, like the, the different species. Um, but as far as the owl, I call it the owl whale. Okay. Um, the, the beluga owl goes. Uh, that was just sort of continuing on the series of hybrid, like my octophant there. And so it's picking two things that are identifiable and then amalgamating them together to form something new. So in your owl series, um, did you do each painting and each owl individually or did you trace them or is that giving away too much of your work? or Because nope, they look very precise. Yeah. Thank so you. So if you could <laughs> talk a bit about that. Uh, each one was done separately. Um, I didn't even know it was going to be a series when I started, but it just... It, it came together pretty quickly, and I felt that uh, it was a good thing to continue on. Um, I had found an old set of encyclopedia pages uh, that somebody was just throwing out, and so I would scour through them to look for uh, any references that were applicable to the owls, be it sight or vision or wisdom or even just certain things like flight or uh, ornithology. And, uh, and so I, what I do is I adhere the uh, encyclopedia pages to the canvas, and then uh, I pick a couple of source images and work from there. I try not to copy anybody's work specifically, like any one photograph, but just choose a couple. Mm -hmm. and, then, uh, and then, yeah, um, I'll generally put a lot of detail into the face and sometimes into the feathers, but then just let the rest fall apart. and Paint lies where it may. So do you, sometimes writers have writer's block, mm -hmm. but do you always find inspiration and, or have you ever had times when you wanted to stop or has this been a constant um, positive thing for you? Since I moved to the island, it's been pretty steady. I've produced more work now than I ever have in my life, um, even, even at school. But I do remember there were certain times, especially right after I graduated, that I just needed a break and couldn't seem to come up with any inspiration or imagery. And, and sometimes you can't, and that's okay. You need some time to sit back and reflect on what it is you want to create. And I found when you try to force it, it the results just aren't the same. That's, uh, Won't go. Yeah. So what made you come from Ontario to Vancouver uh, a couple different things. Um, I've been visiting the island for a couple of years to see family. Um, my mother-in-law had been out there for 15 years, and so I just fell in love with the island. Um, as far as coming to the West Coast specifically, uh, I find, first off, it's, it's nicer to look at, um, personally. Mm. Um, there's, there's nature everywhere. There's greenery everywhere, wildlife everywhere. and. Uh, as far as the art scene goes, I, I find it a little more accessible. Uh, I, I think that people are 
quicker to just say, yes, this is something that I like. They don't need a long-winded explanation as to why it's what it is. Um, they're just okay with just liking something and then leaving it at that. And I find it's very open-minded here and that there's a lot of artists that I'll bump into just walking down the street. And, you know, I've, it's comfortable. It's comfortable. It's a good place to be an artist. Let's talk about, well, okay. You do other types of art because people might, you know, this is very um, complex and interesting, but you do, I shouldn't say it's regular art, but you do <laughs> portraits. And talk a bit about that, how you um, started doing that and what you like about that and uh, that, in fact, people can have their portraits done or animal portraits. Talk a bit about that. Sure. Um, well, as I'm doing my own work, a lot of people will come up to me and, and they'll say, oh, like I had this idea. Um, would you be willing to maybe do this for me? And so I started to step into commissions and, and graphic work. Um, I've done so... You know, just sometimes if somebody needs something, you'll take the time and do a logo for a business or an event or a poster or something like that. Uh, as far as portraits go, I've um, portraiture was one of my favorite subjects oh, in, in college. Um, I had a fantastic professor who really showed me how to capture the light and shadow and the shape and what to look for in the human face. And so um, it must be pretty detailed, complex. It is, yeah. Um, but I find that it, that's actually when I have some of the most fun is, is making sure that my image looks like the person. And, and oh, interesting. Yeah. So uh, I will do that once in a while if people ask, mostly for uh, their kids or weddings or pets or that kind of thing. And I work with a, a jewelry designer in Ontario that I do the portrait and she casts it into a little pendant and, and the person can buy that in the original if they want. So, so um, have, is it difficult, I, artists, it's, it's the same thing with writers or any kind of artist, you have to keep your day job. Is it a struggle to be an artist and have, to, and, and have a livelihood? Um, can you combine them? <laughs> you can. Um, like a lot of people on the island, I work a couple different jobs, but uh, I'm one of those people who's able to sort of multi-track, and so there's always constantly things running in the background that uh, I'll come up with source imagery at work or something somebody will just say off the fly and be like, oh, that would be a good painting. And so it, it's always there. I'm always looking for inspiration and, and looking to pick that up. And, so. and on the way here, we were talking about, you're involved in a couple of other things. You're the director or something involved in an art group? Uh, correct. Um, Talk a bit about that. Well, when I first moved to the island, I was heavily involved with the, uh, the Southern Gulf Islands Arts Council there. Right. I'm still a member. Um, and they, they have a good initiative in, in that uh, they have a lot going on to support the local artistic community. And that must be good to have those artistic mm -hmm. con connections. Absolutely. Yeah, it's very inspiring to be surrounded by artists. Um, I'm also the art director of an event in Vancouver called Vault, which is Vancouver Alternative Arts and Fashion Week. Uh, it's going into its fifth year now, and we represent up-and-coming fashion designers, musicians, artists, performers, short films, with a little bit of an edge. Mm -hmm. Not the normal scene. Not the normal scene, yeah. And talk a bit about your shop. We have how many minutes left just to... <laughs> Anyways, we've sure. got a bit of time. Okay. But we should talk about your shop on Main Island. Um, how did that happen? Well, that, well that's, I call it a gallery. It really is a gal gallery. It really is a gallery, artwork. yeah. The it artwork really is, is for sale, but we try, to, uh, um, we try to promote it more so as just somewhere you can look at local work. Um, Maine is, is unique among a lot of the islands in that we do have a gallery that, that's able to do that. And we represent about 90 artists now from in and around the Southern Gulf Islands and uh, Vancouver Island and a couple from, uh, from Vancouver as well. Uh, the gallery came about really just as a stroke of luck. It was good timing. Um, the former owner had been operating it for about 13 years on the island, and he had made a lot of strong connections with artists there. And every artist's dream, he was just so busy with his own work that he couldn't keep, keep running <laughs> keep both of them, which isn't a bad thing at all. But, yeah, uh, yeah. And so I, uh, my, my partner and I came into that at a very good time, and we've been running it for the last two years, and it's been very successful. 
Talk about, because we'll see the outside of it. We'll make sure of that. Uh, talk about the, I was, the bear. I have to say, I liked the bear <laughs> the other day. It was so welcoming. Well, the bear is uh, one of the new art, newer artists we brought into Envision. Um, it's, uh, it's chainsaw art by a gentleman named Jason Soper. And we're always looking for what's new, what's unique, what's, what's whimsical, and what's specifically local. Mm -hmm. I find that chainsaw artwork very interesting. I, have you seen his? Like, have you seen him do his I've work? I've <laughs> seen photos of his process, and he's a much braver man than I. I'm much more comfortable behind a brush than I. And what is some of the, your favorite stuff in your gallery besides your work? Uh, besides my own work, um, I feel a little biased for. Oh, guys, <laughs> I know it's all nice, but there must be everybody has favorites, right? Well, some of the more popular stuff, and and some of the stuff that we really enjoy promoting is uh, there's a collective called um, Cedar Mountain that's based off Salt Spring, and they do sort of uh, nature work with ephemera, similar to my stuff, but a little more um, fanciful. Uh, Quasimodo Pottery, who have been working on the island for several years now. Um, we cannot keep enough of their stuff in the store. People are always coming and looking for that. That's beautiful stuff. I was at somebody's house the other day, and they have a whole wall collection of mm -hmm. their plates and stuff. Beautiful stuff. Yeah. Um, but so we also carry jewelry and metalwork, woodworking, a lot of different, just a lot of different disciplines that are represented in one small space. So how can people get a hold of you? Myself, mm -hmm. uh, I have a website um, that is www.bedouin.com, and that's B-E-D-O-W-Y-N-N. -N. Uh, I'm also on Facebook, DeviantArt. Um, as far as the gallery goes, you can go to www.envisionmaine.com. Oh, cool. And then maybe they can come to Maine. That's the check plan. check you out. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for doing this. Oh, thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us.